Whoa, that was quite a morning workout. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Boy, you found spots on me I didn't even know I had. I think I set off some car alarms. No, babe, that was you. How did you get so good at that? I love what I do. <laughs> You know, Denise's husband hasn't done it since the 80s. And Rachel's husband, Audie, refuses to do it unless he's drunk. Well, that's too bad. Not really. Audie's an alcoholic. <laughs> oh, and you know, Karen's husband, Tom, leans so far to the right, you'd never know he was a Democrat. <laughs> what? Is this the kind of stuff that you and your girlfriends talk about? Oh, no. We talk about lots of things. We talk about, uh... Oh, yeah, that's pretty much all we talk about. <laughs> you, uh, you talk about us that way? Oh, uh, well, I wouldn't call it talking as much as bragging. Franny, I'm not real comfortable with you discussing us with your girlfriends. Oh, come on. Don't you brag to your friends about me? No. Well, why not? Because guys don't do that once they get serious with a woman. Now, the first couple weeks, I was getting high fives from strangers in elevators. <laughs> but now that we live together, what happens in our bedroom should stay in our bedroom. Please, don't talk to your girlfriends about our sex life. OK. But you're not only disappointing me, you're disappointing Karen and Rachel and Denise and my manicurist and her interpreter. Oh, and Rabbi Schwartzman's sister. She lives alone. She's got nothing. <laughs> Riley told you not to talk about you and him with your friends? That's right. And I can't talk to you about my sex life because, well, you're my daughter. And I can't talk to my mother about my sex life because, well, she still refers to it as her wifely duty. <laughs> Do me a favor, whenever you talk about grandma and sex, give me a small warning like a tornado siren or a giant flare. We were actually saving those for when you hook up. <laughs> Uh, Josh, don't forget, tomorrow you have a dentist appointment at 11. Ooh, right. I think I might cancel. Josh, don't you realize that the teeth are the windows to the soul? <laughs> That's eyes. Who's gonna be looking at your eyes when you got no teeth? <laughs> it's just that I haven't seen Dr. Pressman in five years. He's gonna be so upset when I tell him I got kicked out of medical school. I'm your mother, and I survived. I'm sure Mr. Spit and Rinse can deal with it. <laughs> yeah, but... Pressman wrote me a letter of recommendation, and now I've left medical school, and I rarely floss. I've let him down in so many ways. Oh, I'll get it. Oh! Hi, Greg! Hi. I brought party picks and plantains. Excellent! <laughs> Come on in. Josh, I'd like you to meet our new neighbor, Gregory. He bought the Breslin house. Hi, so you're Josh the doctor. I'm sorry, I mean almost doctor. <laughs> I was almost straight until I left the prom with a guy named Ralph. <laughs> okay, well, I need to go. I gotta figure out a way to break a dentist's heart. Ooh, I broke a podiatrist's heart once. It's not easy. Oh, yeah. Hey, are those the pictures from your wedding? Yes, you mean our civil union? Oh, yeah, our fearless leaders are just so romantic. I know. <laughs> I don't care what you call it. All I know is I had a honeymoon <laughs> in Havana. Ooh, was Fidel Castro at your wedding? No, that's David's mother. Oh, well, at least you're gonna know what he looks like in 20 years. <laughs> Come on, let's have some coffee. All right. Oh, Franny. You know, if you and Riley ever have any boredom in the bedroom, may I suggest a honeymoon in Cuba? Ooh, good to know. <laughs> but I guess you guys are still in that first year of Passion Palooza. Am I right or am I right? <laughs> I can't really say. Oh, no. Is it an issue of quality or quantity? 
Um... Oh, my God, it's both. Tell Gregory everything. I can't. I can't. Oh, my God, sweetie, is it that bad? No, it's great. But I promised Riley I wouldn't talk about my sex life with my girlfriends. Well, technically, I'm not a girlfriend, girlfriend. Oh, thank God, because I was about to burst. Hey there. Hey there yourself. I think I was the one who set off the car alarms this morning. You sounded like a foghorn. Ooh, friend. <laughs> it was incredible. And all you did was add a couple frozen grapes. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can thank good neighbor Gregory for that one. Uh, I mean, I read it in Good Housekeeping. <laughs> you were talking about us? Even after I asked you not to? Uh, no, actually, Gregory was doing most of the talking. He was, was he? Uh-huh. And, you know, the whole thing with the frozen grapes, he calls that the Arctic Circle. He learned it in the Navy. <laughs> Fran, I asked you not to talk to your girlfriends about us. Well, there's a fine line between girlfriends and gay friends. See? It's like stalactites and stalagmites. <laughs> So, technically, I'm not wrong. I'm not wrong! So why do I feel so wrong? How do my teeth look? I've been sucking on a whitening strip all morning. I decided I'm just gonna talk to Pressman, and hopefully he'll accept me for who I am. Chief of Surgery at Mount Sinai. Give me a minute, Josh. I just gotta find Riley and apologize. I thought I could get off on a technicality. Oh, hey, Mrs. R. If I give you a check for rent, could you hold on to it? Uh, till when? Until I get a checking account? Whatever. Did you see where Riley went? Because we had a fight and I want to say I'm sorry. Maybe he went to cool off at his apartment. What are you talking about? Riley doesn't have an apartment. Yeah, he does. Riley has an apartment? Yeah, Riley has an apartment. Mom, you ready to go to the dentist? Did you know that Riley has an apartment? Riley has an apartment? Riley has an apartment. So? So? Is there something you want to say to me? Is there something that you want to say to me? You can start by apologizing for talking about our sex life. Yeah, you can start by explaining why you still keep an apartment. What? I thought you were going to get rid of it. Yeah, I was going to get rid of it. But you never got around to it. Well, how hard is it? You're a responsible adult. You just stop paying the rent and sneak out in the middle of the night. Fran, it's not a big deal. Well, do you ever go there? Sometimes. What times? I don't know. It's close to work. I go hang out, eat lunch, whatever. Whatever? I don't like the sound of that. Hey, you're the one who's in trouble here. You know, you keeping a secret apartment is way worse than me talking to my GMBF. Gay male black friend. It's not secret. It's the same apartment I had over on 65th from when we were dating. You never wanted to go there. I never wanted to go there because you said it was a dump and you were getting rid of it. It's still a dump, and I am going to get rid of it when I'm ready. OK? OK. Good. Good. Fine. Stop, Stop saying, saying what I say. <laughs> Why are you and Riley fighting? Oh, because I think that he keeps secrets that he should tell. And he thinks that I tell secrets that I should keep. You're both wrong. No, he's wrong because he's the man. Have I taught you nothing? <laughs> OK, so he keeps an apartment. What's the big whoop? I love Riley. And I? Love my new hot dentist, Sarah Pressman. She took over when her old man died. Oh, he died. <laughs> Isn't that sad? <laughs> What's sad is one pain pill in your Robert Downey Jr. Oh, I'm just being silly. I don't even know why I'm doing this to myself. I know that Riley loves me. And I know my hot dentist loves me. 
because she said she wants to see me again in six months. I thought that your father loved me until I found out that he kept a secret condo with silk sheets and a matching bimbo. <laughs> bimbo. <laughs> That's a funny word. Bimbo. Mom, Riley's not dead. He'd never cheat on you. I know that Riley wouldn't cheat on me, but he did seem weirded out when I told him that I knew about his apartment. Oh, look, there's Riley's old street. Hang on, kids. Ah! Mom, this is stupid and it's illegal and it's never gonna work. Well, it's still stupid and illegal. Oh, boy, this really is a dub. Okay, we've seen it. Can we go now? Ew, look at this gross rubber rug. Mom, that's the bed. Oh, boy, Playboy Mansion, it ain't. I think it's pretty clear Riley's never had a girl in here. Not without a hazmat suit. No, no, it's Riley. Why would he knock? Good point. Maybe he forgot his keys. Another good point. Why would he knock if he thinks no one's home? Yeah, another good point. <laughs> who the hell are you? Well, who the hell are you? I'm the super. Then I'm screwed. <laughs> All right, you have till the count of 10 to explain what you're doing in here. Well, it is my understanding of the law. Five, oh, four, oh, oh, three. Okay, 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 okay. okay. Uh, the reason why we're here is because my boyfriend told me that he gave up this apartment. I know, secret sex pad. Yes. Yeah, you know, uh, I could maybe turn a blind eye. Oh, thank you. If I had something to cover my eyes up with. Oh, oh, yes. Right, of course, of course, yeah, okay. Here, here, here. Okay, just don't burn anything. No, 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 thank you, thank you. Boy, you know, if we weren't breaking and entering, I would report that guy. Mom, we've seen enough, and it's pretty clear he's not hooking up with anyone in here. Yeah, but if he's not messing around, then why is he keeping this dumpy apartment? Meanwhile, this is shockingly comfortable. <laughs> You know, sometimes a guy just needs a place to be a guy. He probably just needs a place of his own. Oh, Yashi, I think that you're right. He probably needs just, like, a guy room, a man cave, a place where he can keep his Patrick Swayze DVDs. <laughs> Who knew he was crazy for Swayze? You know, he's overrated as an actor, but underrated as a dancer. <laughs> What? The guy can move. <laughs> hey, I've got a great idea. You don't have great ideas. You have crazy ideas. <laughs> you know, you think you know me, but you don't. Allison, go grab that bed sheet. You, find some duct tape. <laughs> oh, there you are. Are you still mad? I was outside with my miter saw. Oh, then you are mad. You only miter when you're mad. <laughs> Last time we fought, I wound up with a beautiful redwood deck. <laughs> okay, so you're still mad, but come on down and see what I did in the basement. So, what do you think? What's all this? Well, this is your new man cave. I febrezed it a little, but it's still all guy and it's all yours. You did this for me? Oh, honey, I get it now. I know why you had to keep your own apartment. I mean, you move into a woman's house. You don't have any place to call your own. You don't even have your own closet. Honey, we share a closet, and that's fine with me. Yeah, but you only have a shelf and a peg, and I use that peg sometimes. I do. This is really nice. <laughs> Thank you, Fran. Oh, sweetie, mm. I am so sorry. I apologize. I will never talk to my girlfriends about us again, even the boy ones. You know, I'm sorry, too. I guess I made too big a deal out of this. If you really need to talk about us, just don't tell me about it. Okay. And if
if you really need to go to your apartment, now you won't have to, because most of your stuff is here. Oh, where? Here. Where? Here. <laughs> I know it looks a little off balance because we lost one of your end tables on Queens Boulevard. Honey, I've never seen this stuff before. What are you talking about? This is not my stuff. But, but, but we went to your apartment on 66th Street. Babe, my apartment's on 65th. Where do you want your Santa? Josh, Josh, we went to the wrong apartment. We robbed someone. No. Yes, we're felons. I can't go to jail. I won't last a week. I'll get traded for a pack of smokes. Okay, okay, let's not panic. Let's not panic. I mean, nobody saw us except that old lady and, and the super and that short guy in the hallway. Fran, you're panicking. Why don't we just take this stuff back? Good, good. Then we won't have to kill anyone. I'll go get the car. I'll go get my hairpin. And I'll get everything else. You really thought this was my place? That wall unit is particle board. Hey, check it out. He's got an accordion. You know, Riley, I was thinking, if you want to keep your apartment, you go right ahead. Thanks, babe. Maybe I should. Why? Because maybe I'll need it, you know, just in case. In case what? Well, in case you get tired of me someday, then I'll need a place to go. Is that the reason? I guess I kind of kept it as a life raft. Oh, honey, you don't need a life raft. I'm your love boat forever. Sorry. Come on, let's get out of here. I need to use the restroom. Ugh, I told you to go before we broke in. <laughs> so you're saying you and me are the real deal, babe? Honey, I burgled an apartment for you, if that ain't love. Mm. <laughs> Hurry up, Josh. Come on, let's go. Oh, check it out. Roadhouse, the director's cut. Nine deleted scenes of chairs breaking. Drop my Swayze, little man. I can't believe you got out of there alive. Well, once she released me from the half Nelson and I explained everything, she turned out to be pretty understanding. Why is her place so messy? Well, actually, uh, Terry's never there. She's a long distance trucker. She owns her own rig. Oh. Come on in. Heidi Ho, Reeves family. Did you guys know that there's an 18-wheeler parked in front of your house? Oh, <laughs> that's Terry. We're running some frozen cod up to the Poconos. Highway's a calling. You know, I dated a trucker once. To this day, the smell of diesel reminds me of sweet, sweet Rick. <laughs> so when did your brother come out? This week, in fact, yeah. Hey, guys. Hi. Come down to the basement for a minute. OK. Now this is my stuff. Oh, you do have a beanbag chair. Oh, and a bar sign. Oh, and a fish on the wall. That sings. That's fantastic. I gave up my apartment, babe. Oh, you did? You ain't getting rid of me. We're gonna go now. Yeah, I'll probably hear about this later. No, you won't. I think you should really stretch out first before, mm -hmm. and then make sure that you and your partner have no sharp objects. <laughs> I think you're gonna find it pretty amazing. Happy <laughs> wedding! Oh, Franny, this is the best wedding gift ever. Aww. I wanted to register us at Beanbag and Beyond, but David wouldn't let us. <laughs> I hear they're shockingly comfortable. 